All right, in 4.2, we're going to be looking at logarithmic functions and their graphs. Now, exponential functions are one-to-one, -one, meaning they pass the horizontal line test. Therefore, their inverses will pass the vertical line test. Okay, so they are, they are functions, and in the inverse of, a, of an exponential is a logarithm. That's how we're going to start this. So it says to generate a table of values for the function by interchanging x and y on the inverse of e. Then sketch the graph of the function. Identify any asymptotes and state the domain and range for the function and its inverse. All right, so let me scooch it up. So the first table, we're going to do this by doing the exponential first. Okay, so we're going to do the exponential version, which if I roll this out, I get 2 to the x power. So if I plug in a negative 2 power on the base of 2, I have uh, one fourth. If I plug in a negative one power, that's one half. Hopefully, you remember the ex negative exponent rule. Uh, two to the zero power is one. Two to the first power is two, and two squared is four. All right. So that is my exponential group. So here's my parent function, and we know it, it curves like this, right? Now. For the inverse of that, which is the logarithm, you've got to remember that um, the inverses of a function are basically reflections across the y equals x line, which will be, okay? So this is my y equals x line. Now, over here, this is g of x, right? Um, this was our exponential. Now, if I reflect that, this point right here that it was 0, 1 is at, one zero and it's going to look like this now that's visually what's going to happen this is my f of x my logarithmic function now what's happening with the points is my x's or i'm sorry the y's of my exponential become the x of the logarithmic so this is one fourth and then the y is the the original x one half negative one one zero two one or two. So we're just flipping, okay? We're flipping the x and the y. Now look at the graph. Where x is one fourth, y is negative two. That makes sense. Where x is one half, y is negative one. Where x is one, y is zero. x is two, y is one. x is four, y is two. So you kind of see what's happening here. Hopefully you get that the f of x is the graph of log base two of x. All right. Let's try another one, the log base 3. All right, so g of x equals 3 to the power of x. So uh, 3 to the negative 2 is 1 half. I'm sorry, 1 ninth. 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. 3 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the first is 3. And that's 9. Then if I flip my points, I'm just going to write these over here. That should be a one, sorry. That's a one, this is three, this is nine. And then I just, my x's become my y's. All right, so let's plot the g of x point first. So, here's this. This is my g of x, which is three to the x power. All right, if I graph my logarithmic function, let's do this, call this f of x, and this is the log base 3 of x. So this is this f of x is the log base 3 of x. Okay, and again, if you can imagine that y equals x line, that is what it's reflecting over. Okay, it's just an imaginary line that's a diagonal journey. There you go. What if it's log base 10? Let's see what if this continues to happen. Okay, so g of x is going to be 10 to the x power. Well, 10 to the negative 2 is 1 over 100. 10 to the negative 1 is 1 10. 10 to the 0 is 1. 10 to the first is 10. And squared is 100. Right? And then we rewrite our our y's as our x's. That's our y's. 
right? And this turns to the x. All right, so let's graph g of x. So this is this, g of x is 10 to the x. And if I do f of x in a different color, so f of x is 10 to the x. All right, and again, that imaginary y equals x line is right there, and that's what inverses reflect across, okay? So it should make sense that the exponential function is the inverse of the logarithmic and vice versa. Now, I'm going to zoom out so we can see what's underneath all this, okay? Because I want us to look at the asymptotes, all right? Um, so first of all, let's look. That little e right here underneath, that for the exponential function, and the l is for the logarithmic, okay? So look at the exponential only. Where is the asymptote? Well, it's right here, right? We already said there's an asymptote right there where y is equal to 0. So then where's the asymptote for the logarithmic? Look, it approaches the y-axis, but it won't cross it. It will never cross it. So that is where x equals 0. Okay, look at the second one, log base 3. Where's our asymptote for the exponential? It's still y equals 0. And the asymptote for the logarithmic is x equals 0, because it's not going to cross that y-axis. The asymptote for exponential on the third function is, again, y equals 0. And the asymptote on the logarithmic function is x equals 0. Notice the pattern here. Okay, They're opposites of one another, right? They're opposite. That makes sense. Now, uh, domain and range. I'm going to scooch out just a little more. Okay, so let's, look at, let's first look at our domain and range of the exponential. So if you recall, look at the black line up here. What is the domain of that line? Well, it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. And what's the range? Well, it will go from 0 to positive infinity. Okay, the range can include what's on the asymptote, and it should include what's in the asymptote. So don't freak out about that 0 being both places. It's okay. The second function, uh, the domain of the exponential, again, is negative infinity to positive infinity. All is fine and good with x values. With y values, though, we know it won't go below 0, so it's going to go from 0 to positive infinity. And on the third graph, we're going to see the same thing happen. It goes from negative infinity to positive infinity for domain. All x values are legal and useful with an exponential. But the range, again, only goes from 0 to positive infinity. All right? Now, Look how this changes when we look at the logarithmic function. My x values, notice, they don't go anything lower than 0. There's nothing over in that third quadrant. So x can't be less than 0. It can be anything greater than 0, but not less than 0. And my range, notice all the y values below, all the y values above are used. So it's all real numbers for my range. The second one. Uh, the, the domain only goes from 0 to positive infinity again because x, x values that are negative don't exist when you're doing logarithms. Okay? You can't do it. You'll get an error. The range will go from negative infinity to positive infinity. And last but not least, this one, base 10, the domain again has to start with 0 and go to infinity. The range will go from negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, so I want you to notice some things, some patterns that you will begin to see that relate as we do this. Um, the asymptotes are perpendicular to one another, right? And at the same value of zero, okay? Domain of the exponential is the range of the logarithmic. The range of the exponential is the domain of logarithmic, okay? And you see that's true all the way through. Now, your, your asymptote relates to whichever one is limited, okay? My y is equal to 0. That means my, my y's are ranges, so my range is limited with the exponential. And where x is equal to 0 means my x's are limited 
meaning that's the domain on the next on the logarithmic function. Okay, so I want you to just kind of notice those patterns, see how they're related, and let's keep going. So the next section says to describe the transformation of the graph of f that yields the graph g. So you're not graphing anything here. You're just looking at, okay, what's changing in the equation and how is that going to change the picture? So notice they're both log base 2 of x, okay, the sole parent function step. Notice this is x plus 3, right? Remember, it's opposite logic, so it's going to move us left. All you have to do is tell me left 3 units, and we're good. Okay, so on the second one here, if you want, you could rearrange this to be negative log base 10 of x minus 4, so you can better see what's going on. This outside negative, hopefully remember, it's going to reflect over the x-axis. And this minus 4 over here is not in parentheses, so that's a vertical shift, meaning it's going to go down 4 units. Okay. The next one, 2 plus log base 6 of x plus 5. So I'm going to rewrite this. Okay, just maybe so I can see it work. So this plus 5 is a horizontal shift. Remember, it's opposite logic. That's going to take us left 5, and that plus 2 is going to make us go up 2. All right? Now, let's graph some, and we're going to look at what's the domain and the vertical asymptote of these guys. All right, so I would recommend on each of these, you start with that parent function. If you remember our parent function for logarithms at a 1, 0, they all go through that point. Okay, so if you start with that point and then transform it however the equation says. So this one says to move it right three units. So this is already at 1, 1, 2, 3. That means I moved it three units, and now it's going to do this, right? So the asymptote is right there. So my domain goes from three to zero, or infinity, sorry, and my vertical asymptote is at three. So x equals three. So although my point's going through four, it's coming down and getting close to the f. Alrighty, let's try another one. All right, so again, I'm going to rearrange this so we can see clearly what's going on. Okay, here's my original point, one. So what's happening here? That negative right out there is going to reflect over the x, and this is going to go up one, right? So I'm going to uh, kind of draw this in stages. So if I go up one, it's going to look like this right? But if I reflect it over the x-axis, it's going to look more like an exponential. Right? So here's my point, but it's going to do this. There's my transformed one. Okay, so what's it approaching? Well, the domain is still going from 0 to positive infinity. And then where's the asymptote? Well, the asymptote's still right here. It's where x is equal to 0. All right, the next one, if you want to rewrite that, we can. Log base 2 of x plus 1. And put the plus 4 on the outside. So what's going to happen? It's going to move, let's see, left 1 and then up 4. Okay, left 1 unit, up 4. So here's my original point of 1, 0, right? I'm going to go left 1. So if I move it left 1, I'm at 0, 0. I'm going to go up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right. Other than that, it's not changing shape. But now where's my asymptote? What happened? My asymptote that's normally at 0 moved left 1 unit. Where is that? Well, that's negative 1. So now my domain goes from negative 1 to 0, and the asymptote is at negative 1. All right. Hopefully this makes a little bit of sense. We're going to work on this in class. Um, I'm going to stop here and do a separate video for part two. So hopefully this helps you and you understand what's going on. So stay tuned for more.